Jeff Johnson here from Game On, your source for gaming news and talk. We're at the Calgary Comic and Entertainment Expo. Another great day at the event, and I'm joined this time by artist Mike Sass. Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Now, Mike, you have quite the number of titles that you get to work on as their official artist. I mean, I see titles like Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, Bioware. How does something like that come about? Um, whoa, here's the... <laughs> The audio overhead. Um, I was lucky enough, right out of school in uh, 1995, to uh, be Bioware's first artist when it was just a startup company. So uh, I worked at Bioware from 1995 till 2008 when they were bought out by EA. And uh, I was lucky enough to be able to learn my craft as a full time employee there. And uh, my job there was to do all the cover art for Bioware. So I did all the magazine covers, all the box art all the finished illustrations. Um, and so when I left there in 2008, I had a, a, a strong portfolio, and it was pretty easy to then get freelance work with uh, all the other titles that you mentioned. So um, I went to some conventions in the States. Um, I'm local to Edmonton. Uh, so all I had to do was uh, you know, find the art directors and the clients, and uh, I had a strong enough portfolio that it was a pretty easy transition to, uh, to getting that kind of work. So now I get to do the same sort of work I did at Bioware, but at home, and uh, have a little more variety to it as well. Now, for someone like me, I grew up with characters like Darth Vader, Luke, all those great characters from Star Wars, and you get to be their official artist. What is, li what is it like getting the chance to basically draw, a, make art of these fantastic storied characters? Well, you know what? I think from an outsider standpoint is, is a little different than from somebody that does it. Um, first of all, there's really no such thing as an official artist. If you say official artist, what I'm trying to do is distinguish from fan art. So the work that I do is for official products. So it's for real games and it goes through approvals for continuity and the look and the quality and whatnot. So that's what official artist means is somebody that does the actual work for the games or the products and not somebody that is doing fan art. So just the characters um, without it appearing in a product. Um, so to be able to do it, um, it's great. You know, I think um, in the industry, the, the challenge is more hitting a, a quality bar and being able to do the characters how they're meant to look. So having the, you know, having it realistic and having the characters look like they do in the movies and having the continuity there. Um, you know, we're not really allowed to take liberties with that sort of stuff. Like, say, for instance, when I do work for Warcraft or Hearthstone, um, that's its own universe that's been around for 10 years. And uh, the, the illustrations that I do have to have, you know, the same armor sets and the same look as it does as the 3D models in the game. So um, you have to be a good enough artist and professional enough to be able to depict those things that people know intimately mm -hmm. and have the accuracy for those details. Okay. So what about something like Magic the Gathering? Uh, is that a, a similar case where they would send you what they expect for this character to look like? Or do you have more liberties with that? Well, yes. Magic is a bit different in that um, they have a style guide per set because each year they have a flavor of a world based on like a different setting. So like a, last year was a Greek-Roman setting and this year is an Asian setting. Um, so you're given like a guide for to follow, like this is the sort of look that these characters have. But Magic is one of the products that the artist is really tasked to bring a lot to the table. So um, you're, not, you're not illustrating an exact character that exists in another format, like a game, like a video game or like in a movie. You have the task then to take the influence and the reference that they give you in the inspiration and put your own spin on it. So there's a lot more creativity that goes into that work, and I think it results uh, in a lot more individualism and, and a higher quality status. Whereas something like World of Warcraft, more the accuracy is key, and the flavor to their color palette and whatnot. Magic, the key more is to take what they give you and, and spin it into something even better. Very cool. Thank you very much for taking a chance to talk with me today. If people want to know more about you, where should they go? Sure. My website is sassart.com, S-A-S-S-A-R-T.com. And from there, you can visit my blog and uh, other places on the Internet. Mike, thank you very much for joining me today. Thanks.
That was Mike Sass. He is the official artist for Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, Star Wars, Bioware, World of Warcraft, Pathfinder. If I'm right, Hearthstone as well. Yeah, well, uh, I used to work on the World of Warcraft trading card game, uh, which was canceled about a year ago, and uh, or maybe two years ago. And then Hearthstone came about, which is basically a digital online version of the same thing. Mm-hmm. And that's found massive popularity now online. And uh, because I have a lot of experience working with them through their trading card game, I have the same art director at the company, and it's the same expectations. Um, I'm lucky enough to be one of the main Hearthstone artists now, and I really enjoy doing that. Fantastic. All those franchises I just mentioned, you can find at The Art of Mike Sass, www.sassart.com. I'm Jeff Johnson, your host for Game On, your best source for gaming news and talk. This is voice actor Crispin Freeman. This is Courtney Taylor. This is Quentin Flynn here, and you're listening to Game On.